Hello everyone, welcome to Speakeasy. I'm Zach. And I'm Jake. We are the Dirt Road Men. Somebody's phone's going off. That's mine. Come on, man. Dude, this, this is a big deal. I'm sorry, I'll put it in my pocket. What's the big deal? I don't know. You know what the big deal is? No, not the call. Oh. Yes, yes There's I a do. couple big deals. Two we, big we, deals. We want two big deals into one video. What's the first one? This is our... You don't know. No, I do know. I'm just not sure which one's more important. Okay, this one's You're our. Not one sure which one's more important. This is our 18 year anniversary of being friends. Yeah. My I knew. God. No. Okay. See, you're being a woman about it. <laughs> <laughs> I know which one's more important to us. <laughs> it's just prevalence to the video. Oh my God. Oh, the first video that we're gonna try to get my wife in, and you gotta drop the woman thing. Did you find that? Did you think that was funny? You were giggling over there. You thought it was funny. So, uh, we've cut her out like two or three times. One thing we thought we'd do for the hundredth video is actually get my wife in front of the camera because she's actually wearing makeup today, and and she's freaking out such. about it. Go say hi. Come on, you can do it. It'll be okay. Go, go, no, go, just go. go. Come on. You've got your makeup on today. Hello. There you go, see? She said hi to the people. Jeez. You guys have no idea how many times she's been down here. Don't flip me off. <laughs> how many times she's been down here and I've had to cut her out of the footage. One of them was a 30 minute video. I had to watch 20 minutes of it to get to the part where she was in there. You couldn't just like... I could have tried to eyeball it, but it was she was only in there for a split second, so... Uh, you don't have to come back here if you don't want to. You gonna come back here and diddle Steve? Here's Katie. Hi, Katie. And Karen. Hi, Karen. You look so thrilled to be here. Also, <laughs> on top of our 18th year of friendship, which, awesome. Congratulations. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, which we did get some Highland Park 18 to celebrate, and we're going to compare it with the 12 while we kind of review it. Um, it's also our 100th video. So that's super cool. Kind of funny how those coincided. That was completely unintentional, because I didn't even know if we could get to 100 videos. <laughs> yep. Not Pe when we started. People keep watching, though, so... Yeah, and people love the Facebook page. Way more people than actually watch our videos. It's okay. You don't need to see uh, us, You can you like know, the memes. And, you know, memes just are great. Buy a damn whiskey box. <laughs> we need to meme the whiskey box. Yes. But, uh... We wanted to do... Some Highland Park 18. As a toast. So, we shouldn't... Okay, I know these aren't our preferred glasses, but the other two glasses upstairs. This should still allow us, allow us to nose okay, don't you think? Yeah. Well, you can leave that out. And we'll do some 18 over here. And these glasses for toast. Okay. Not left handed. Not ambidextrous either, huh? So, the big difference other than the age, apparently, is just that one's called Viking Honor and the other one's called Viking Pro. So, did you see if the cork fit? No, I accidentally corked that one with... So, Island Park 18 versus yeah, really. Island Park 12. Now, we cheated. We had a little... Yeah, we did. As soon, as soon as we got the bottle. We were actually looking really way too hard. For an 18 year old bourbon. Very few bourbons actually make an 18 year release because it's a hotter climate over here. So, hmm. That uh, little bit bigger store on uh, 23rd Street that we're going yeah. to go to? Yeah. They're going to call me when they get some with uh, Elijah Craig 18 in it. Cool. In in. In in. In in. Um, but it'll probably be like November, December. Oh, wow. So, still, that'd so be they cool. They get like two bottles in a year. So, he'll call me when it's on its way. Cool. But yeah, um, the 18, I want to compare to be sure, but I know it's more kind of robust. Let's do a toast first. 18 years of friendship. Hell yeah. That is so good. Oh my god. Man, and the Ardmore is a Highland whiskey too, but 
It just doesn't stack up. No, it's... But it's also, it doesn't have an age statement, so it's probably, you know, three, four years. There is a minimum on scotch. I've said before in a video that there's no minimum. There's a three-year minimum. Yes. So that's my bad. But... Wait to fail. <laughs> hmm? It's a way to fail. Oh, go to hell. It's not like it's the first wrong thing we've said on you know, camera. You know, your lake house is next to mine. Uh, we're so sure we're going to hell that I have a, a house overlooking the lake of fire. So. <laughs> Mine's across the way. I guess we're not next to each other. Mine's across the way so we can have paintball wars. Yeah, it's pretty great. We're not sure if they're going to be able to go through the lake of fire, but we should have eternity to figure out how to make that work. So. Hey, you know what though? Hmm. We could probably just use real guns at that point. Yeah, good point. We're not going to die. We're of sniper wars. Ha! Ah! <laughs> Man, it's gonna take me like three days, three days to grow this eye back. <laughs> Get a raven; it'll fit. <laughs> Here, you want to A B compare first? Uh, I guess we should probably A B compare. Well, let's start off. You can definitely tell there's a color difference. I can definitely tell there's a color difference. Oh yeah. There's also a, a, apparently a difference in fullness of bottle. So there's that. Yeah, that's probably why this one's lighter colored. Oh yeah, totally. No. Longer age, darker color. Happens with bourbons too, but particularly with scotches. I really like this color. It's like almost a bourbon color. Yeah, it's... It takes them 18 years to pull off the same color we get in four. <laughs> Some, uh, sometimes like six months. Depending on where in the U.S. we age it. I was thinking Kentucky straight bourbon. Smell it now. Do you notice some uh, differences? Mm-hmm. On the nose, this one's definitely woodier. Makes sense some, to have some, more more wood notes since it's been in the barrel longer. And it um, smells more rounded. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing I noticed um, that I'm not sure I remember from the 12. See, the flavor's not as salty on this one, surprisingly. Uh -uh. Like, it, it tingles your nose a little bit at the same distance from the glass. Are these... Um... 43... 43, so they are the same proof. Yep. Which may contribute to why this one is so much darker. Because in Scotland... Go ahead. Dark chocolate. I noticed a dark chocolate flavor that I didn't get before. I bet this would pair super great with the Maduro. Probably would. But, uh, yeah, this is a nice bottle. little mildly pricey bottle of whiskey. So yeah, it's not. It's it was like 150 bucks after yeah. tax. So for some people, that's gonna be like, wow, that's crazy. For other people, it's be like, huh, okay. <laughs> the bourbon would have been more expensive. <laughs> I got corks that cost half that price, or that cost twice that price. Yeah. But, um, in Scotland, mm -hmm. as, uh, the whiskey ages in the barrel, more alcohol evaporates out of it, whereas with, with most bourbon in Kentucky, water's evaporating out of the barrel, so... So, the proof drops in scotch and raises in bourbon? Yes. That's interesting. So for eight, you know, eighteen years, like they might have dumped the barrel and it would only been fifty percent alcohol. Yeah. So and here it was already it was much. could have been you know sixty. Yeah, that makes sense. So dropping it down that little bit. Get you. Is your brain doing science? <laughs> I uh, learned that from a. Uh... See, I thought that was an original thought. You should have left it alone. Oh no no no, no I. I... Um, no. I'm, I'm just busting your ball. Jimmy Russell. I was watching a uh, video of Jimmy Russell talking to some people. Jimmy Russell's a great man. I'd like to I'd like to shake his hand. Tell him thank you. i take Eddie too. Oh yeah, but... They're both, they both work at my favorite distillery, so... I, I have been noticing that, uh, with the whiskey that's in my cabinet, and the empty bottles I have above my cabinet. Mm-hmm. Been leaning towards uh, wild turkey 
pretty heavy. Yeah. Uh, well, we did get you wild turkey for your wedding, but we were looking for a bottle of Jim Beam. We actually found looking for this. And it, they said it's a minimum 17 years old, but it didn't have an age statement. It had to be 18-year-old whiskey. Yes. So we felt that was more important than making sure it was a bourbon. Because we're very pro-American dudes, so we thought bourbon was the right way to go if we could have. <sighs> it's all right. Though. Someday. I mean, well, we found a, one of them was a 22. I found a 21-year bourbon and 21 a 22-year bourbon and so a 23-year bourbon. In a couple of years, we'll be... Yep, and then me and Momo will have been friends 21 years next year, so we can sample in. You know, Momo needs to sample in some of this, too, because he met you the same year I did. I don't know if you guys really became friends the same year. I don't... <sighs> he was in my class, so... I don't really remember... meeting Momo... until... Like middle school, probably? Yeah. Around sixth grade. Yeah, because he wasn't in my fourth and fifth grade classes, no. and you were. We were in classes together until we didn't have a single class all day. And, and still, then we always had a class together at least. Until the uh, second semester of senior year. Yeah. I got moved around a lot. It was scary. Well, in the last two years of high school for me, I stopped gearing my days around easy A's and, and coasting. Yeah, he took Started. a lot of the big classes at math. Yeah, Senior I year, I took a bunch like, of math and science credits. Like I, I took all of the science. I just couldn't fit anatomy into my day because they wouldn't let me take three science, four sciences in one year. So I was taking Chem 2, uh, Bio 2, and Physics in the same year, and they wouldn't oh. let me add in anatomy. Why? Too many sciences. So I can handle it, just let me keep my study hall hour. My biggest complaint was that, uh, workshop cabinet making mm -hmm. was not a fine art. Yeah, it should have been. But it is, though. It, it is! I mean, you can be lazy and make mediocre stuff, but, like, yeah. if you want to make something really good, and even the mediocre stuff takes work. Yeah. Like, I was lazier in art class than I ever was in shop, because I actually enjoyed what I was doing in shop and in art class. It was just people telling me I had green when, in fact, they had made not green. Yeah. Or whatever. I'm 90% sure. I'm colorblind. The only reason I passed shop class was because I was a senior went out. in a class of a freshman. Yeah. That 18 is just amazing, but it's definitely more... More well-rounded. I noticed a chocolate flavor I didn't get in this oh. one. They both have like a honey sweetness that I really enjoy. And that peat smoke kind of back, back burner flavor. I got the, uh, it just hit the dark chocolate right before you said it. Yeah. Um, it's pleasant. I got it on the 18, not the 12. I got yeah. it coming oh. off of the 12. That should be the 12. Oh. That should be the 18. Hey, just because I got it from one place and you got it from another. You have it double. I know. I engineered it that way. <laughs> <laughs> that was by design, my friend. Look at you mm -hmm. using your brain. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, for everybody that's... I don't know if anybody's still watching us that was watching us in the beginning, but if you were, uh, thanks for being here. And if not, thanks for being here anyway. 100 videos. It's... Yep. Did you... I thought we might do like four or five. Man, those first couple I thought, okay, we'll do this for a little while and it'll fizzle out. But then we turned it into a business and that helped. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we just kind of kept going. And for some reason, people watch us. <laughs> We've actually been doing even better of late, particularly with cigars. Apparently you guys like it when we talk about cigars more. Which is cool, but we're more knowledgeable about whiskey. So, so we got to stop. This means we have to... Step buy. up our cigar knowledge. Yeah, buy and smoke more cigars. Damn the bad luck. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, cigars are cheaper. <laughs> per stick, but... How long does it take you to go through a uh, bottle of whiskey? Hell, man. Hey, here... here, here um, depends on the bottle of whiskey. By a long branch. Mm -hmm. I just, just finished it off. And that's when perfect. you really liked. 
And I got that on my birthday. Yeah, so you had that one for like two months. My Blanton's? Yeah. It's still half full. Yep. I know, we had some last week. <laughs> um, how long have I had this? A while now. At least a month. At least. Mm, it's been more than a month. I couldn't remember if we got it before or after your birthday. Before. But, uh, yeah, I mean, generally, though, if anything's in here that's been in here longer than, say, two or three months, it's probably because I'm not that big on it. Like, the written house is really good for a ride. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and the uh, Knob Creek is really good if you're sober and you just really do not want to be, or you're not sober and you want to further your insobriety. Or if you're new to bourbon and you want a classic bourbon, and or you're a whiskey snob or drinking with a whiskey snob. Yeah. That's what I would choose Knob Creek for. That's the exact scenario in which I would say, this is what you should drink. Although now, honestly, given the choice between the two, I would start them on Long Branch. Because it's smoother. I think if I was going to start, like, try to get anybody into bourbon, mm -hmm. I think I would start with Wild Turkey 101 or uh, Jim Beam. Devil's Cut. Or Ooh. Black. Black is probably where I'd go. But yeah, that's that's if you're not worried about that snob factor. Because people snob factor 101, and 101 for me is the benchmark bourbon. Yeah, it's... I mean, it's I, the, I, Jim Beam's really similar in flavor. But but as far as... Yeah, they're, 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 yeah, they're about equal for me. I'm still going to give a extra point to Jim Beam. Yeah. Because I really, I really like and like Jim Beam. <laughs> so what's, uh, this is our 100th video, man. Who cares if it's monetized? <laughs> We're having fun. I swear. Fuck. Fuck. <laughs> Ow. But, uh, what's been your favorite thing so far that we've done? Um, tell you what my least favorite thing is. <laughs> It's probably my favorite thing. Was it the Irish video? Yeah, the Irish <laughs> video was my favorite. It was my least favorite just because um, I drank so much that behind bars. Not even because I lost, but I won. It's just in the dice roll at the end there, uh, I drank too much of the behind bars. Yeah. Because somebody did, just would not finish that last shot even though they lost the dice roll. <laughs> Why are you looking at me? Because it was you. Shh. No, it wasn't. It was Seth. No, Seth manned up. <laughs> he drank all of the ones he lost. I know. No, I rolled you for it and you lost. You handed it to me and you were like, hey, this is the last one. Your turn. I was like, I'll roll you for it. And then you lost. The video will tell the tale. No, I, I, I believe you. <laughs> it's just... so, so that was your least favorite moment. What was your favorite moment? Um, you know, I don't know. It's hard to pick. Hard to pick one? Yeah. Well, other than the Irish video, what would be your favorite? Other than the Irish video? We did... Probably Whiskey Thanksgiving. That was just awesome. We, uh, in my opinion... The closest thing we've done to that was America the Beautiful, and then you messed it up for me. I'm sorry, you didn't, <laughs> you didn't hear me properly. You didn't. It didn't register from your ear to your brain what I was saying. I probably would have liked America the Beautiful better than Whiskey Thanksgiving if we hadn't mixed it all into one drink. I'm sorry. It's okay. Maybe maybe we'll do it your way next year. We're still doing these if we're still... Yeah. Now, my, my least favorite was actually the Bottle Down video, because... I wanted it to be cooler, and it felt underwhelming. It was extremely underwhelming. Um, it was particularly irritating because we should have just shot them, but we didn't. We had to hurry because the storm was coming. We used the BB gun, and they weren't. It, it wasn't even busting the bottles in the first shot. No. It was just... Now I had the most fun editing that video. I think I did a good job with the edit. Personally. Yeah. But yeah. That was a big letdown for me, because we'd been prepping for that since we started. 
I still have bottles we were saving for that. Well, um, my brother, now that we have a battery for the camera, we need to probably do a better bottle down. Bottled, bottled down 2.0. Yeah. We're probably also going to need to, like, I don't know if we should redo it or not, but our winningest video has been um, How to Smoke Your First Cigar, which is funny because we, we go through it, right? And we spend about a, a 10 actual minutes talking about How to Smoke Your First Cigar and 20 minutes BSing with Mama. But that's... But that's, like, half our videos. Yeah. I mean, that's all of our talk videos. That's why we did a talk video. So we, yeah. could, we could segment out all of our BS, all of our bullshit... For one video and be more to the point on the other ones because we noticed that our, our watch times dropped off at about eight minutes so and we're still over every time oh yeah but you, if you want to be monetized you want to be over 10 minutes gotcha and we're not always over 10 minutes, but we're also not monetized yet, so I'm not super worried about it. And honestly, I'd be surprised if we got monetized with some of our political videos that we do and stuff like that. I really enjoy doing those. And I've been thinking about doing a separate channel where I talk more about politics and stuff, and like philosophy in particular. But, I don't know. It doesn't jive with, with some of the stuff we do on this channel, so I don't do it as much. Fair enough. I also really liked uh, Hugh Glass's Badass Motherfuckers of History. I thought that was an excellent one. Hugh Glass was a badass, badass motherfucker. Yeah. But you can't pick a favorite? I, I don't know. It's just... Because for me, it's not really about doing the videos. It's... Like, if we were doing this without doing the videos, the only problem I would have with that would be... I might end up getting stuck at home more. You know, like, oh, like, this I can, it feels like, like we, we need to do it. We have to do it. Yeah, it's work. So, I was super cool with that, but if it was like, a, just, <laughs> we're, I'm just going out to hang out, maybe play poker and yeah, drink some whiskey and smoke cigars with the guys, it might be, well, we need to go do this instead. It's, no, we got to get this done. And we have made some money off of it, you know, we've yeah. sold some whiskey boxes and stuff, not as many as we'd hoped, but but we've sold them and we're revamping them and literally we just have to buy a couple parts and then we're going to have a new version of the whiskey box. Uh, I've got a line on some t-shirts, I just have to figure out what we want to put on the t-shirts. So. Steve. 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 Well, I still want to do the, the thing with <clears throat> uh, the gun emblem uh -huh. from the video game gun, but have uh, Steve on there and then maybe stick some 1911s behind him instead of uh the six guns because you know we can't blatantly steal their emblem yeah we well, you know what it. <laughs> i feel colton white would have been uh 10 times more badass if he had a couple of 1911s instead of uh what i think of when i hear a colt 45. yeah versus what turned out you were thinking of for like eight, 18 years <laughs> Yeah. Um, but, like, I've really enjoyed learning a lot about whiskey as we do these. And I've gotten to play a lot with Facebook ads and, and different stuff like that, and I get to meme. And it's cool because uh, it's actually, like, I was more guarded with my opinions uh, publicly uh -huh. because, like, up until recently, our political views got shit on a lot. <laughs> they still get shit on now, but but at some point you just stop caring because because the people that are the hardest in arguing against you are now outraged about everything. So yeah, you don't care anymore. It's like you were mad last week about something totally different. So I don't care that you're mad this week. Like being a little political since we're on topic. Yeah. I bet if our president, Donald Trump, said that he was going to do everything to a T that Bernie Sanders wanted to do. They'd still hate him for it? They would hate him for it, and there would be riots in the street. In fact, I bet I, bet I know exactly what they would say. <laughs> they would say, A, he's trying to seize control, or B, he's such a failed president that he's trying to copy good politicians. 
But they'd never change their mind and actually no. like him. They'd use no. it. They'd use it to call him a slime ball or something. Yeah. But just about everything he has done as president, po policy wise in particular, poli policy wise, yeah, has been exactly what we needed. Yeah, I think. I mean, he's done some. He, no, 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 no. He's said some stupid shit. Yes. I can definitely agree with that, but when you look at like his policy, how many is it? Eighty-five to ninety percent. <laughs> uh, that was a, uh, a a Bush quote. Yeah, he's not the only president to say stupid shit. Well, part. and my favorite thing is when people talk about how crass he is, is to bring up Lyndon Baines Johnson. Yeah, he would. He, his, was, he, he would he show so his secret. Worse. He would show his secret service member, his member while he was taking a pee. He would just flop it out and be like, "Look how big I am!" Yeah. Holy crap, bro! No, yeah. thing might eat me. Got me too. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, hashtag me too. I forget that's not the bad symbol anymore. <laughs> That's what happens when you grow up thinking, hey, that's the pound symbol, and people start calling it, oh, hashtag. No, it says pound me too, ladies. Maybe pick something different. <laughs> Let me give you a hug. Best that, was, that was awesome. <laughs> you know what? This one. This one? This one might be my favorite. <laughs> it, we, yeah, I think this one. Whiskey Thanksgiving was really fun. Um, but this one. Yeah. Uh, it's one. Well, and you can kind of cheat with that because this is our also, you know, we've been friends 18 years, so I don't know why I looked in the box like a goddamn Cracker Jack prize was going to come out. Oh, look! <laughs> is it Odin's eye? <laughs> Give me thy knowledge! I'm scared though, right? They went from Viking Hunter to Viking Pride, and I'm like, is, is the next one gonna come in a pointy <laughs> bottle? Like. <laughs> a pointy bottle? Like a horn? Like a white pointy bottle? Oh! <laughs> Are we gonna skip from Viking Pride to White Pride? Because. Uh, that tends to come with bad connotations. <laughs> oh man, no. I uh, hope not. If so, I might, I might not. <laughs> no! Don't tell me to pump the brakes. <laughs> pump the brakes. I said I'm concerned about it. Um, we are in no way actually <laughs> suggesting that Highland Park has anything to do with the KKK or white no. power. Or That's one of my least favorite things. Aryan Brotherhood is. that roams prisons. So, so I have a lot. Of, <laughs> I have a lot of Scandinavian heritage, apparently. I mean, I have a. And I, and a well, that too. Only around my arm. But you have to be careful with like Viking symbols now because. The Aryan Brotherhood. Brotherhood. Brotherhood likes to use them. Yeah, I, um... I'll look at, like, tattoos I want to get, and then I've got to go, okay, does the Aryan Brotherhood use this to show status? Because I don't want people thinking I'm doing that. Like... Actually, a guy actually came up to me and was like, hey, are you such and such? And I was like, I don't even know what that word is. He's like, oh, have you ever been to prison? No. No! Man, I, I've never even gotten a ticket! <laughs> oh. Okay. Yep. Cool talk, bro. But please don't knife me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that was another thing. Another video I really enjoyed doing, but I was so mad when I made the video, was uh, Stand Up for the Flag. Yes. Because, like, people kept saying it was a bunch of white nationalists. It was a bunch of people that were ticked off that somebody said they were going to drag the flag down Mass Street. They were like, you know what? One jerk may want to drag the flag, but we'll all stand here and remind people that most people love it. At least what it stands for. And even even the uh, assholes who are going to drag it, which I don't know if they ever did. Uh, somebody did, but I don't think it was the same people. Because the person that generated it was a KU student from California. Makes sense. Um, but, of course, okay. they, now KU's flown a defaced flag just in the last two weeks, so... I heard they got in a lot of trouble by the governor for that. Governor said you're taking that down right now. <laughs> but um, but all those people who were there and supporting them, he, yes, it is their right of you know it falls under freedom of speech, which I don't understand why. But 
then if you say something to to them about how that's such bullshit, they're like, oh well, it's, this is my right. Mm -hmm. It's like you, you're crapping mm -hmm. all over the thing the, that protects your right to yes. do that thing. Yeah, you're <laughs> such a hypocrite. Like if, if you, you don't if love you it. in the UK, and you put something on your Instagram that somebody doesn't like, you can go to prison for it. What would be the ramifications um, if somebody made a video holding uh, a replica of like the Queen's severed head, or oh, man. or did an artwork on a, a, a business's window of somebody cutting off the Queen's head? Oh, dude, they probably wouldn't wake up in the morning. You know what happened? They, they'd at least that would be their head. head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but not a replica, not a painting. It'd be their actual head. Yeah. And it's like you're you're hiding behind the thing that separates us from them that allows you to do that even though we don't like it to do it. And and uh recently in the UK mm -hmm. This is a yeah, uh, you can you can go to old timer pocket knife. It's like inch and a half long, give or take. Yeah. I got to I go to jail. Yeah. There's a, uh, okay, you remember the pizza chick? There's a two, there's a British couple and the pizza chick was like, I'd rather have eight, a pizza cut in eight slices than ten because I couldn't eat ten. Yeah, no, but it's it, the same pizza. Yeah. That chick, uh, uh, posted something on their, their, like, shared Facebook page or whatever. Uh-huh. That was like, say no to knife crime. And I'm just like, you... I mean, yeah, don't stab people, but really? <laughs> don't stab <laughs> people. Like, yeah. Okay. Mean, meanwhile, we have Mattis always carry a knife in case there's cheesecake or you meet somebody that needs to be stabbed in the throat. Mm. <laughs> My knife's not very big, but I could kill you with it. Yeah. It might take me longer to pull it out. But... Well, that's their logic as to why you shouldn't carry it, but it's like, I can kill you with anything. Like, you could beat somebody to death with this ashtray. For Catch for, these hands. Huh. For fuck's sake, mm -hmm. I have to pick up a sharp object. Yeah. That's not sharp. Psh, now it is. I'll protect you now. <laughs> Stab him in the throat. <laughs> is that Arthur? Yes, that's oh, Arthur. Oh my god. Arthur, I love Arthur. Arthur Shelby on Peaky Blinders tells a guy he'll protect him now right before stabbing him in the throat like 16 times with a broken bottle. <laughs> Arthur's my spirit animal. <laughs> Like when they try to pull him off the guy that tried to shoot his brother and he like rips out part of his neck with his teeth. Yeah. <laughs> That's the brutality I aspire to. Let me help you. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've really enjoyed it so far. I do hope we can uh, sell some stuff, you know, make actually make some profit on this. That'd be cool. But even if not, I'm really enjoying it. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if we can't sell anything. I don't know what we're going to do with some of those boxes. Maybe yeah. that could be, maybe if this whole thing just turns to shit. Yeah. That could be our farewell video. Yeah. Just shooting them or blowing them up with. I don't know. I'd give them away. Give a bunch of them away. Yeah. I mean, start handing them out. Here's a box. Now they're like, let them fail! <laughs> <laughs> we need no, to come up with like we a... We made enough uh, money to be okay, so... We should come up with like a uh, promo code or... Do you know how to do that kind of stuff? Can we do that? I've been trying to figure out the promo code thing because I have friends that live close that don't actually need shipping. Okay. And so I've been trying to figure out a promo code, but honestly I kind of dropped it because what I would do is I would just tell them to buy it in the middle of the night and I would turn off the required shipping charge. Oh, okay. have them buy it and turn it back on. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. If you're close enough, we'll it, drive it to you. Yeah, it's. I'll probably drive it to you. <laughs> <laughs> I get a quarter of the mileage he does. Yeah, we'll drive it to you and have a drink with you. I don't think so, no. no. We can't sell alcohol. Uh, but we may selling. or may not give you some alcohol. Yeah. Maybe. Like, we'll bring some alcohol to drink with you. Yes. Yes, we will. 
if you live close enough. If you're buying in, like, Chicago or Virginia, where I know we have some viewers from, like, sorry, dude. <laughs> Although my phone says I'm in Chicago, I assure you I've never been to Indiana. <laughs> you mean Illinois? There either. <laughs> oh my god, that might be my new favorite quote. <laughs> Indianapolis, genius. Indianapolis is the capital of India. Is Chicago... Chicago is the capital of Illinois. Oh. <laughs> My bad. Oh, I love you, bro. Uh, 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 before we go, cool story. We both need to share a cool story. We do story time, and those videos okay. do well sometimes. I've got... It's... Oh, no. Okay. You go first. No, you go first. Okay. So, there's a uh, really, I guess, neat little uh, authentic uh, Mexican restaurant. It's only a drive... Well, it's a drive through or a walk-up. You can't go inside because, like, the building is just a kitchen. It's called Burrito King. It's over in uh, Lawrence. Hey. We used to go there all the time, and they have a oh, man. big, big fucking burrito. It's called the Everything Burrito. And you get, like, everything that they carry inside. I think one time all I found a spatula. <laughs> 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 but uh, we went there. We had a burritos. We were in uh, your Dakota. Yeah. You drove there, and you had... No, yeah, you, you drove all, all around. Um, we were on our way back. And there was this really great, big, muscle-bound fella. <laughs> this little bitty, dainty lady fella walking across the, uh, inter the, the uh, crosswalk at the intersection. And I scream out the window, You're running out, boy, forget, save you now! And I reach over and I shove Zach's leg down so his foot hits the gas. Because he was <laughs> just on the clutch. And... Thought the lady fella was gonna jump into the big fella's arms, <laughs> and then I just I popped the clutch out, so we just took off. <laughs> we scared the crap out of them. That's a good one. That's oh, the best man. one I can think of off the top of my head. I'm sure there's better ones. That's a good one though. <laughs> Here's one of my favorites. So we had this period, right? Because uh, we had this friend who kind of decided he was at odds with us, and he started telling people lies about stuff we had done. Specifically, um, and, and when I confronted him about it, he said, well, it happened to me, so I assumed it was you guys. Anyway, this guy had told enough people that people started coming up to me and saying we had cut his brakes and loosened his lug nuts. And so we hit this period for a while where so many people were saying it that we just started being like, yeah. <laughs> and then the other people would say that we had done other things, and we just started being like, okay. <laughs> like, so sure. So, like, some people think we've done, like, all these things that we haven't actually done because they just started saying it, and we were like, that sounds cool. So we'd go with it, right? And then I was with this uh, girl at the time, and <laughs> we were out, like, jogging or walking, I think, or something. It's dark. And uh, we had gotten pulled over by a cop because it was the middle of the night, and I work nights, and so we were out in the middle of the night. Cop leaves. We're walking. And I see our car starting to come this way, and I know it's her. And we look at each other and decide to take off running. <laughs> <laughs> Just bolt. And so we take off, and... <laughs> And she pulls up, cuts us off. She's like, what the hell's going on? What are you two running from? Like, what are you even doing out here? And she just starts freaking out. And we're like, nothing. We just we just went on an uneventful walk. And um, all of the things... Go ahead. You'd slung the, the door open on the van. And, oh, and yeah. jumped in. And I just, like, dove in and screamed, hit the gas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we didn't we did not not contribute, right? We, we really sold the idea that we were running from something. <laughs> and a a every time she would ask, all we would say was we went on an uneventful walk. And her imagination invented so many things that we might have done. 
And I swear to God, to this day, she does not believe that was just an uneventful walk, which is basically what it was. No, it's just, <laughs> we wanted some exercise, and we also kind of wanted a McDouble. <laughs> yeah, so we went to the McDonald's and came back, and that was like a four-mile uh, uh, trek. And she just happened to pass us on our way back. But, oh, uh, that was that was a fun one. I really liked that period, though, because, like, we'd get accused of stuff, and rather than, like, sticking up for ourselves, or because most of the time it was stories like we beat the crap out of somebody or broke somebody's knees or... <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> and so we'd just be like, yeah, sure. Or, or we're walking around trying to figure out how to steal a, uh, like a 19... Oh, yeah, Galaxy. 65 Galaxy 500. Yeah, <laughs> like Fords. We're going to steal yeah. one. We were walking around with beer cans. Was Arizona. Are you trying to chime in? Uh-huh. Yes, honey? What's your guys' favorite time together when you guys were in the band? Oh, my gosh. When we were in a band... That's easy. That's froze. Yes, hands down. When we hands played down, froze hideout, hideout. when we Kansas, Cody Jinks played froze hideout uh, back before he was really big. Really? Yeah, he played with uh, Drek, and we played with Drek, and we were we were shocked because like they went on before us, and and half the band was like, we can't go on after them. We can't follow that. We had been practicing like eight hours a week, at least eight to twelve hours a week every week for like three months for this show and we murdered that show we played better than them and they had been a band for 12 years that's the only time i can say we've played better than them yeah but but we just destroyed it that day it was awesome and the place like there weren't that many people in front of us when we started playing but by the time we were done people were standing outside the doors looking in at me mm-hmm like, we had planned all this cool showmanship stuff, like climb on the drum set, job off, all this stuff. And we couldn't even do it because people were so close we couldn't move. And the floor vibrating. Yeah, and we got my dad to jump with his uh, jacked up knee. Although um, apparently he was doing like super calf raises. Hey man, <laughs> if you can get vertical by only moving your ankle, good on you, mate. <laughs> and, uh... One of my favorite parts of that night, though, was because uh, I think my favorite part about being in the band more than that night, as far as when we played best, was just all the practices at the school at Baker. Yeah, just, those were awesome. This wasn't really a uh, memory with you or with you guys. It was on my way to meet up with you two, or you three. Mm -hmm. um, you and. We just used his nickname, Woody. Mm -hmm. We're in Lawrence grabbing Monster, and I thought you guys were coming to get me. Mm -hmm. And you guys called me. He's like, "Hey, have you left yet? Because you need to drive yourself today." And I'm like, "Oh no." Okay, so I went and I filled up my tank, and I called you guys. I was like, "How far away are you two?" Mm -hmm. You guys were halfway between Lawrence and Baldwin. Mm -hmm. So I was like, "Okay." So I left the house in the Toyota. Yeah. This is an 89 Toyota pickup. 2 point... Oh, I don't know. 2 point... 2 something liter engine. Yeah, the 22 RE, 5 speed. Excellent little engine, excellent little truck. So I throw my base and my amp in the truck. Hit the radio and hit the gas. I was sitting there waiting for like a full 5 to 10 minutes before they got there. Uh, so I went from... <laughs> where My house in Eudora. A lot of you are going to be like, these are just town names, but... Taking the back way, and they were on the highway from... And the back Lawrence. way should take, like, half hour, 45 minutes. Yeah. That neighborhood, at least. I was there in... The highway uh, we were on, especially being halfway there, we should have been there in 15 to 20 tops. I was there in 10. Yeah. <laughs> the the, the uh, speedometer hit 110 in fourth gear. Like I said, it was a five-speed. So a whole other gear left to go. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot of country out here for those from not from the area, so yeah, you can just open it up, and and there's a 95 percent chance you're gonna see no police officers on the way. I may have get to town. <laughs> if I did, he was probably just like, "Wow, <laughs> how?" <laughs> yeah, <bro. laughs> yeah, but thinking about that kind of stuff now, though, it's like 
What if a deer would have popped out? Yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Where's Jake? Oh, you know. He and when didn't I make spun it. out doing like 130 with my headlights off in the uh, eclipse. Mm. Oh, that was dumb. Oh man, no headlight driving. That was a really fun period <laughs> of our time. Wait, Jake, were you there on our wedding on the way back to get papers with him? Were you there on that day? Or was it Travis? No. It, it was him and Travis. Him and Tra that was a rough day too. <sighs> to get as an papers. excellent day though. The, the, the contract, the, the wedding contract. Oh, your marriage license. Yeah. yeah you, you know yeah. that ride. Oh, yeah. So I was thinking, what's Wait. your guys' favorite time together being in vehicles at the same time? Like, oh, what's like your... I don't know trip. that I would categorize that as my favorite. It'd have to be the no, road trip. Not, not the road trip, but yeah, just, like... it just, that just made me think of that question. We were doing yeah. similar stuff, only like on a desert where we could see for like 20 miles in front of us. And we were messing with the people driving near us if it happened. We followed Route 66 most of the way down there, too. <laughs> On our way to uh, St. Louis, there was that, like, it was like your stereotypical um, happy-go-lucky, probably Christian family in a minivan. Dad's wearing, you know, khakis and a button-up shirt. Uh, we Mom's wearing a sundress, and there's a couple kids. I've got a uh, bottle between my legs. And he's leaned over. I'm in the front seat, and he's driving. He's leaned over, just uh, stroking the bottle. <laughs> I made eye contact with the dad, and just was like, <laughs> he pulled off the highway. It's like completely no. the highway. He didn't want to be anywhere near us. Two lanes of traffic, and then an exit lane. And he was just like, no. <laughs> Absolutely not. He went and baptized his kids on the side of the road. I guarantee it. <laughs> yeah, that was a pretty good one. <laughs> There's a lot. I don't know how many times we listened to Highway to Hell on that road trip. It was just me, Jake, and our buddy T-Bird. And we were supposed to go with like eight people. Everybody dropped out at the last minute. In a great big square body Suburban. Yeah. Yeah. And then after that, an early 2000s Suburban. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and uh, Momo drove the early 2000s Suburban and he dropped out. And so that really changed our plans. We were going to rent a car. We ended up going in uh, T-Bird's uh, Ford Explorer. And that thing had no end of problems when we got back. We did but, like 95 all the way to Arizona and back. It was the pinnacle of performance and reliability. <laughs> we kept telling it that on the drive so that it wouldn't die and strand us there. So it we would, didn't know how we were going to get home. We'd be cruising along and then it'd just be like sputtering out and we'd have to pull over and shut it off and hang out for a minute and <laughs> it'd fire back up and we were gone. Once we hit, once we got back at least to Lawrence, I was like, man, I know a guy with a tow truck. Yeah. <laughs> this piece of shit. <laughs> Strand me, I don't care. Some poor farmer almost lost his dogs on that trip too. Mm. Oh man. They're really cool dogs. It's just I heard barking and growling and woke up with a machete. And we were both asleep and our buddy was outside of the car and we heard barks, barking and growling and stuff and we see these dogs coming out of our friend and we came out of the car ready to kill some dogs to help them out and they were just once they got to us they were like what's up? Man I <laughs> swore I smelled some ombre beef jerky <laughs> somewhere in the vehicle. Yeah. Help a dog out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These dogs, I swear to God, came from like half a mile off. It's just we were in western Kansas, so you could see forever. Yeah. Then we pulled up. We pulled up. And we pulled up across the, kind of across the street, catty corner from his house. And he has the idea to call his mom. Because we sent her a picture from Las Vegas, New Mexico. They have the same sign as Las Vegas, Nevada. And, and that's all she had heard from us. And so he caught us call her. And we told her that he had gambled away all of our money in Vegas and we were stranded. And he sells this to his mom to the point that she's like damn near in tears coming out the door with his brother to Western Union as some money. So we can get back from Las Vegas. And her, his brother just goes, is that them right over there? And I got slapped for it. <laughs> because it just had to be my idea. <laughs> it wasn't my idea. <laughs> it might have been mine. It might have been Travis's. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think that cycles through most of my favorite stories of the last 18 years. <laughs> yeah. 
a lot of good times. How did we meet? We didn't tell them how we met. Not in this video. We have told them before? Yes. Yeah, we did. We did. The oil cloth thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I moved to the town we grew up in, uh, little town, Eudora, Kansas. It's much smaller when, in 2000. Yeah, it was like 4,500 people back then. 18 years can change town a lot, apparently. Um, I moved in. I started school the second day because we moved, like, we finished moving, like, the first day school started. And, uh, mom got us enrolled by the second day and didn't have, like, anything we really needed, just basic pencils and paper and some crayons. And they were going through, some people in the class had too much, so we did, you know, sharing is caring and... His grandma bought him, one of the things was an oil cloth to put over the desk so the clay didn't stick to it. His grandma bought him like a whole tablecloth for like a picnic table. <laughs> I didn't have any oil cloth. I didn't know what that was. <laughs> he had an abundance. Yeah, so so I, I cut it into like fourths or something and I gave him a section of it. Like third grade. <laughs> he was the first person I talked to, so I was yeah. like, okay, so we're at recess. I was like... I don't do it with my hands. What are we doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Apparently for the next like two years getting in a fight with girls. But that's yeah. that's a different story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, I suppose we've rambled on long enough. About an hour. You can probably <laughs> You got enough? Oh yeah, I just I, I got enough for toast. Topped off. Eighteen years of friendship. Eighteen years. We can have a cigarette and do porn videos. Oh my god. Come on, man. <laughs> Till we see you again, I'm Zach. And I'm Jake. We are the Dirt Road Men. The Dirty Road Men. <laughs> hey everybody, if you like this video, uh, hit a like or dislike, comment, uh, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And if you really like what we're doing, uh, check us out over on Facebook where we post every day. <laughs>